Um, first of all, thank you to anyone who made this uh, competition possible. I'm Nanoch Houts, and I'm here to share my solution to the competition. Um, to the agenda, first I'll give you some background information on myself, then I will summarize my uh, solution, then I'll dive deeper into the feature selection and feature engineering and the training methods. Um, then I'll share some important findings and a uh, simplified model. First, about my background. Um, I'm an economics student at the Heinrich Heine Universität Düsseldorf with a strong focus on econometrics, machine learning, and empirical methods. Over the past four years, I've participated in Kaggle competitions on and off, combining them with my own machine learning and analytics projects. Uh, early on, I noticed that overfitting to the leaderboard may become a problem in this uh, competition, as the uh, submissions were very sensitive to the selected seat. So I stepped back from the competition after a while, uh, as I was afraid of overfitting to the leaderboard. And I joined uh, at the end of the competition again to make my solution a bit more robust. But uh, never did I think I would actually win. <laughs> So now to summarize my uh, solution, instead of uh, predicting the target directly, I um, predicted the uh, uh, underlying scores and uh, converted them to the labels um, via optimized thresholds. And the final model was then a majority voted ensemble of three based models. Um, one um, large GBM model, one cat boost model, two XGBoost boost regressors, and one extra trees regressor. Um, the key features were largely not surprising uh, age, weight, height, the daily internet use, and um, another very important feature was the score of the sleep disturbance scale to give some, uh, to summarize the runtime of my uh, solution. Pre-processing takes about two minutes, uh, training including cross-validation about three minutes, and uh, parameter tuning took um, a bit longer, a few hours, due to the repeated certified K-fold uh, cross-validation approach. Um, yeah. Now to go into more detail on the uh, feature selection and engineering. Um, First, um, let me uh, tell you how I approached the actigraph data. Um, I created separate masks for day and night, deriving some de uh, descriptive statistics. Uh, here, the number of features grew very quickly with high collinearity and very little signal. So to re uh, reduce dimensionality, I applied PCA, retaining only 15 components that captured about 82% of the variance. A deliberately cautious approach. While the overall impact of those features was relatively small, there might be still some valuable information in the raw features. Um, I also um, addressed uh, dimensionality due, uh, through uh, reducing the dimensions of the fitness gram zones by um, combining them to mean, minimum, and maximum features and dropping the original columns. I also uh, created some derived features such as the difference between daily energy expenditure, expenditure and the basal metabolic rate and the ratio of extracellular to intracellular water. Especially the first one of those had a moderate, uh, showed a moderate improvement of my CD score. And to deal with uh, noise, uh, towards the end of the competition, I quantile win 15 features. To be honest, my approach here wasn't particularly um, methodical. I just uh, selected a few uh, features and uh, looked how the score changed. This uh, contributed to an uh, improvement in my CV score and uh, to the stability on the public leaderboard. And um, for feature selection, I performed manual uh, backwards selection um, by looking at the feature importance and uh, generally eyeballing uh, the changes in the CV score. 
features were deemed not important when they were jointly unimportant in uh, three of the models and unimportant is, uh, means they were among the uh, bottom 10 features. Um, considering this was an ensemble uh, model, uh, uh, pointing towards the most important features isn't that straightforward for me. Uh, but among the consistently important features, um, there were age and the total raw score of the sleep disturbance scale and the uh, T-score of the sleep disturbance scale, as well as the height, the weight, and the hours of uh, internet use. Here are now three of the feature importance plots um, of the five models. It's still not um, that clean of a, a graphic, but I guess one can still see um, that what I just said, that the sleep disturbance scale is very important, age is very important, and um, there were other important features, like, especially from the fitness gram um, uh, features. Here, the normalized pull-ups or curl-ups, but it was relatively inconsistent which of the, these features were prioritized by the model. Um, moving on to the um, partial dependence plots, I want to show how the average prediction changes with changes in the features. Um, and yeah, those are the feature importance plots for three of the most important features. Uh, for weight, the predictions sharply increased between 40 and 80, as you can see, plateaued. And then there was around 120 uh, pounds, again, a sharp increase. Um, for the sleep disturbance scale, we see a relatively uh, steady increase with uh, somewhat of a jump between 40 and 45. Um, and then for the internet hours, which was originally uh, just an integer feature, but due to uh, less imputation, there were also some floats in it. Uh, you can see that uh, between zero and one, there's a, a steep upward curve uh, followed by a small plateau and another effort curve. Something quite interesting here is that the signal of weight is largely due to uh, age and sex. And um, uh, after partialing out, uh, one can see that the uh, signal diminishes uh, rapidly, but um, there still remains some signal. For the score of the sleep disturbance scale, if one partials out uh, age and uh, sex, there still remains a strong signal. Uh, now, moving on to the training methods. As I already said, the uh, um, final model was a majority voted ensemble of light GVM, cat boost, extra trees, and two extra boost regressors. The hyperparameters were optimized using Optuna. Uh, combined with repeated stratified K-fold cross-validation to ensure robust results. Uh, while this was computationally very expensive, this approach helped mitigate the uh, optimizer's curse, which was a key challenge in this competition. Um, the models in this ensemble were uh, correlated between 0.95 and 0.99 with the um, um, Initially, the yeah, two extra boost regressors had different parameters and uh, thus lower correlation, but over time they uh, converged and now they are essentially basically the same model, just with double the weight and ensemble. Um, well, and that's it for the trainings method. Moving on to some important findings. Um, Throughout this competition, several key uh, insights emerged. Quantile binning and feature selection improved the performance as well as the stability. Um, a robust tenfold uh, stratified K fold cross validation approach stratified by bins was essential for the reliable validation. 
uh, changing seats frequently allowed me to test the model's robustness both in the CV and on the leaderboard. On the leaderboard, I largely only looked at the variance of my scores. I submitted multiple uh, uh, times the same solution just with different seats to see how it changes. Um, lastly, uh, robust lastly, why robustness was key to my approach, I'd like to acknowledge that luck was a very important factor in my uh, success. Uh, moving on to the simplified model. Um, for the simplified model, I selected 18 features, um, dropping all PC, uh, all Actigraph uh, features and the only using a single XGBoost regressor. Um, one of the key features of the XGBoost regressor could be um, is that I used parallel trees, essentially having a boosted forest. Um, the public leaderboard suffered the most under the sim uh, simplification, dropping to 0.425. The private leaderboard uh, score dropped to 476, and the optimized CV score to 453. Um, now to summarize the uh, solution. Um, early on, I recognized that overfitting would be a significant challenge, so I emphasized strong cross-validation strategies and reduced model complexity, feature engineering and uh, elimination played critical role, uh, roles in enhancing the model's performance. And while this was um, instrumental in uh, the good performance, it was a key uh, aspect of my success was luck. Overall, this is a very traditional approach and I hope I could still provide some value. Um, and now I'd be open for questions.